But yeah, you, no, you have to roll the banners. And and if you're smart, if you're a veteran of cornering, you roll them from the bottom up. Yes. So you put them over the top of the octagon, they drop. Well, I mean, it's old times now. We don't do it anymore in the UFC, do we? But I tell you what, though, that reminds me. That trip when Wad came to Vegas, when I fought Ludwig, was when we saw that UFO. Thing. Did we tell you about it? Of course. Yeah, well, I was back. Bear in mind, when you told me that, I didn't put two and two together because obviously I was back here sulking about someone folding my banner for me. <laughs> You and Wada live in the dream after you knocked out Ludwig. Yeah, man. Hang on, I put my, my, my glass of water in the most awkward place. Um, yeah, it was weird. We were driving around the 215 uh, south, just past where the PI is now. And it kind of, it, it goes, uh, it, we're heading west at the south end of, the, of Vegas. And then it starts to turn to go north towards oh, where Red Rock Canyon, Red Rock Casino is. And he was using my room at the MGM because I was fighting on the car, but I wasn't staying in the hotel. I was staying at home. So I'd gone to pick him up on the Sunday after the fight, and we were driving back. And what was funny is that he, he came over a little earlier, and we'd been watching uh, Ancient Aliens. <laughs> and and Wad's the kind of person that sits there and just trashes everything that they're saying, because it's all nonsense. I watch it for a bit of fun. There's some interesting stuff in there. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun. The guys are off, uh, over the, on there, you know, mostly most of the time, they're completely over the top. Is yeah, that it, that. That's him. Giorgio Salukas. Yeah. And it was aliens, but it was aliens. <laughs> so we've been watching this stuff. Anyway, we're driving along the 215. And, and that's me driving, in case you didn't know. Nice. Well, I couldn't tell you're on the wrong side of the road, but change you gear. Tell. No, you couldn't tell. No. Change gear, I could tell. <laughs> so anyway, we're in, my, we're in my truck. Remember that black wicked truck I had, that, Nass, that Nissan? We're scooting around the, around the 215. And all of a sudden, this shadow came over the car and like, st but stayed in the lane, but was was it was high up above. Obviously, whatever it was, I couldn't see anything. There was no noise, no nothing. But it was high enough, high up enough off the road for the shadow to be in the lane and be quite sharp. But it was, but there was nothing. It was really weird. Well, you can feel the presence. Well, this, this is the thing. I mean, I took a couple of shots the evening before from Ludwig, and I thought to myself, <laughs> probably not, not to screw loose or something. So I'm driving, seeing this this shadow disappear around the 215 and start heading north, thinking to myself, have I just seen have I just seen that? And I can't say anything because I'm with the skeptic one ne who's next to me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he leans forward out of the wind, the wind, the windshield, the windscreen, and he's looking. He's trying to find something in the sky. I'm like, you saw that as well, right? We both saw it. It was very, very strange, very strange. But with the with all those Air Force bases, and I know what mystery mystery's thinking right now. Area Fifty One's right nearby. That's it. We drove to it that day. So yeah. Man, there's there's got to be some secret shit that's just sure. out there. Do you know what I mean? And if you were like, in stealthy stuff, drunk people in Vegas is the perfect place to do it, right? They were well, probably yeah. facing each other around the two fifteen. Yeah, Man, you would though. Could you imagine that I, when when I was at nursery with one of my mates, we had fire bikes. So if we grew up together, which we have, and we could now work in a top secret base and race like disguised fire drones around fucking Vegas, of course we would. That's just like everyone's dream. Could you imagine? Like imagine being let behind the curtain just just a little bit, just so you're like, holy shit, that kind of fucking exciting. Like, yeah. Stacy's cousin's uh, brother-in-law used to work at Sony. So he was one of these that'd walk in, and he'd sort of give it some like this was back in the day, and he'd go, "Oh, you got you got PlayStation Two, have you? All right, yeah, I've just seen him working on PlayStation Seven as it goes." And you're like, "Oh, have you? Yeah, is it coming out yet?" He's like, "No, j they're just sitting on it." So everything's advanced, and everything's fucking way past. But yeah. sure. if you do you remember a movie called Roswell? Uh, I can remember the DVD yeah. case. Let me look up. The yeah, I remember the DVD case because when I, one of my friends back in the day worked at Another World. It's called Forbidden Planet, I think now, or it was before it went bust. But there was, in Derby, it was uh, Another World, and it did all like games, DVDs, BB guns, nunchucks, that sort of stuff. But I do remember Roswell. Okay, film. I'm pulling up the, the the page for it now. Yeah, so because it had a bunch of famous people in it, Martin Sheen's in it. Martin Sheen's in it, for, for example. Yeah, but it's, it came out in '94, and it was about the uh, it was about Roswell. It was about the, the what's it called the, the UFO that crashed. Yeah, yeah. Could I find that DVD when I when I lived in the US? 
it became a thing. Like it became a thing for me because I was talking to somebody once, typically at 10 Planet, the, to headquarters. And I'm having this conversation about this movie. I put, tried to pull it up on my phone and it, it just wasn't, it just didn't exist. So I'm like searching it, I'm searching it. Then I'm like going to like google.co.uk to see if I can like search it from the UK. It was, I, I literally can't, couldn't find it anywhere. So then I, then it became a thing where I'm like, every time I'm, I'm in a DVD store, like used, like Zia in Vegas had a wicked collection of used DVDs. Every, every time I went in there, I checked. Every time I went in one of the Zia branches, I always checked to see if, see if it was there. Never heard of it. It was really weird. When you asked for it, though, at the counter, did someone just speak into their collar? Dude. Like, he's asking for it. <laughs> he's asking. I'll tell you another story. I don't know why I'm in a storytelling mood. This is another story. So when so there, there are two major book chains in, in uh, the US when I was living there. It was Borders and Barnes and & Noble. And I think it was Borders that went out of business and closed down. Was it Borders? I don't know. Yeah, Borders. I'm sure it was. Anyway, Borders... There was a, a uh, there was a, a branch of Borders next to the Whole Foods I used to go to. So I used to call in there sometimes, pick up a couple of books, whatever. When they were going out of business, they were selling everything, like for like 70% off. So I thought to myself, I'll, I'll run in there and just grab, you know, like if, if, you were, if you got a free run of a place and you just thought, oh, I'll grab all the classic DVDs or movies or books or whatever. So I just went in there and grabbed a whole bunch of books that I knew I'd want at some point. And I just stacked them up and took them to the checkout. And as they were going through, scanned them. And I had some good, I had some good ones in there. I had like, I, I had like, well, I mean, like War and Peace, and uh, uh, I had um, <laughs> Che Guevara's Guerrilla Warfare Tactics or something. Anyway, as this as this guy checkup guy is scanning them through and putting them in the bag, he comes to one and scans it through, and the computer makes a really weird noise. And he looks at the screen and he reads it, looks at me presses a button and then carries on with the bagging. And ever since then, I've, I've got hassle at airports. Now that might be me being paranoid, but the book was a communist manifesto. And I think that I got added to a list because I was buying it because I was stupid enough to use my credit card because I didn't have enough cash. Yeah, because you put your name to it. Because you got stopped on the way out to Vegas when we went out. Always. So when, yeah, well you even said, I know you've mentioned it to me before, but it's one of them where I know that I'll say to people, I always get stuck to the metal detectors, but that's only because I've got that many lucky coins in my Johnny pocket. I've got a fucking wedding ring I can't take off. I've got my belt, everything. So I normally get stopped. But when you got stopped, it was for a good, like, 25 minutes. Yeah, you lads go and get a coffee and have a piss because I'm going to be here for time. And it was. Yeah. Always, mate, always. It, 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 it gets so consistent that it like I make a joke when they go, oh, you've been you've been randomly selected. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, and I know as well because when I get to the when I get to the airport, I, sometimes I'll like I'll have the ticket on my phone or I'll print off a ticket or whatever. They always replace it with one that's got a bunch of S's at the top of it. That's like like I don't know what super uh, secret service secret special search something something. Oh, someone's just got a mad lift. Like, super, <laughs> super, search. You know what I mean? Like it someone's always, dog for on the keyboard. Always, it's 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 ridiculous. I tell you what, as well, I've never flown because I I've, I've flown into Texas from South America a few times as, in connecting flights. I've never made a connecting flight in an airport in Texas. I, I always get delayed and detained and searched. Oh shit. They like take my shoes off and like swab the inside of the shoes. They have me open all my electricals and turn them all on. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 